did the whole time. That's all. Just yeah, that's the good way. Yeah. Okay. Well, if there's nobody new, uh, I just did like three talks. I did it, but there we had three talks yesterday, and. Uh, The whole point here is being ourselves reality. If that's the, that's the understanding, or let's say the thesis, or the what's being presented, and then uh, there's a negation of everything else that's going on that seems to cloud or obscure that fact, being ourselves reality. Yes. So there's. There isn't a fact that can obscure it, but there can maybe be a lot of activity that seems to obscure it. But the fact is, the assumption is being ourselves reality. So the one part, the one place I read the statement by Ramana, which was the greatest mystery, is uh, reality wanting to attain reality, being ourselves reality. Now, he may have said it in different ways. I'm sure he did. But you sort of get the point. Why the biggest mystery is reality wanting to attain reality? Most people don't see that at all. Yeah, they see it's Paul wants to attain reality. And in the world of Paul, and in the community that Paul may be in, that's like very virtuous and noble. Yes, that Paul wants to attain reality. And there may even be support. People may even provide me a place to live and take care of my daily needs so I can practice and meditate more so that I attain reality with the hopes that maybe it will be like trickle down spiritual economics and other people will get the effect by my effort. Yeah. And so on and so forth. And then you can judge how close you are to reality and how far away. And maybe someone will write a book, uh, the quickest way to reality. And then all this and it will go on and on and on based on this premise that we're not reality. Yeah. Now, if that was a fact that we weren't reality and that maybe would make wanting to attain reality really juicy. Yes, it would, because we're not reality and we feel and what we're having now as not reality, we believe without really any evidence that it would completely be chilled out if I attained reality. Yeah. So again, that which is the the representative of what you're not is looking to get an advantage from the idea of attaining reality. Yeah. Instead of just recognizing you're not that, it's so much simpler. And it doesn't take any time at all because you're not that. <laughs> there's, there's no huge convincing period. You don't have to change from what you're not to what you are. You're not that. You're not this idea that is the basis of the narration. Now, you know, we hear a lot every day, usually while you're doing something, there's thoughts that are telling you you're doing something. Like if you were doing something, why would you need to be told you're doing something? Yeah. Wouldn't you be, you know, aware of doing it? Yeah, it sort of seems weird to me. But so here's these thoughts constantly narrating what were happening and then giving tons of meanings to it. You know, you may just be having a Sam sandwich and you may be crossing the fucking, you know, border between vegan and carnivorous. You know, who knows? It's like a you it is it's given a huge, huge meaning. So in this idea, being ourselves reality there must be something going on that's causing us to want to attain reality. Yeah, obviously. It's not being ourselves reality. That's not basically the modus operandi. So when you listen to the head and you listen to that narration of your life or the life every day, it goes totally against a simple statement by a great Zen master from China, Huang Po, which is incredibly descriptive and to see if it fits, which is uh, what's perceiving, what can be perceived can't be perceiving. Simple, yes? Whatever can be perceived cannot be that which is perceiving. Now, 
compare that to the narration in one's head. The whole story in one's head is that which can be perceived by looking in a mirror, you can see the body Paul, that which can be perceived is what's perceiving, yeah? Now, why would you want to, you know, uh, it's like plugging the holes in a dike when there's absolutely no dike, really, yeah? It's like crazy. Why not you get to the point, yeah? Is to see the activity, because the activity is not seeing the activity. It says it is. What we are is seeing the activity. There's an awareness of the activity called selfing. Selfing is not aware of that activity. Yeah? The selfing is not aware of that activity. What we are becomes is aware of that activity. Yeah? Now, hopefully, there's a receiving of an understanding that explains that we're not that. It doesn't explain it to anything. There's just an explanation of it. And now the awareness, somehow you lose interest, not by trying to lose interest, but there's a loss of interest in Paul and the story of Paul. And then there's a gaining of interest or your interest sort of rests in actually what you are. And then you start seeing all these activities that imply you that assure that they're about you, that they they have a historical take that it's you, and it's and it also a future historical take that it's gonna be you. You'll see all that from what you are. And there you have it, really. Yeah. Now, instead of looking for what you are or what people have said or you've read, let's say looking for what you are reality from what you're not, you'll see the activities that imply what you're not from reality. Yeah, it's just that simple. Yeah. It may look like the exact same event, but the uh, emphasis will be shifted. Instead of the emphasis on the cart that assures that it's before the horse, you'll see the cart from the horse, yes? You won't be living a narration that the cart is in front of the horse. You'll live a life and it's super clear that the horse is in front of the cart, yeah? And so now the emphasis on nouns weaken and there's more emphasis on verbing yeah so now you're living again yeah <laughs> the interpretation keeps playing but you've left the audience you know you've left the stadium so to speak you can hear it it's like when we were younger in new york we used to ride our bikes from long island to central park and they had this big a stadium, not a huge one, and it was called Schaefer, and they had a Schaefer summer concert series. And you could hear the concert from outside, and there's all these rocks and places to seat, sit, so there'd be tons of cheap people that didn't have the money to buy the ticket, and they would be sitting around, and they would hear it, yeah? They weren't there seeing it, but they'd be hearing it. Well, this is what happens. When most people listen to the narration, they see themselves as a body, yeah? An image is conjured up by their listening to the narration. What happens is you're hearing the narration and that image isn't being conjured up, yes? There's a huge difference between hearing and listening. When there's a listening to the narration, there's an image that's projected you as a body, yes? When there's hearing it, in other words, there's been a loss of interest that would be demonstrated as listening, and now there's just an interest, a basic interest, which is hearing. That hearing doesn't promote that image, yes? 
Yeah, by hearing their narration, you're not in the in the present tense state of picturing yourself as a body. Yes? It's pretty cool. So So what's what's one to do? You've tried everything. I bet you if we totaled up let's say all directed efforts called spiritual seeking from these squares, it would be a couple hundred years, I'd imagine, yeah? And yet we all end up at the Zoom. Yeah. So maybe what we did was completely successful by revealing that it's failed, yeah? Hallelujah. I thought I failed, yeah? But in fact, the system, the modalities failed, and that was their value, yeah? What can a failed system show you? It's failed. So finally, uh, you, mo you may be moving, but the seeking has stopped, yes? You may be in activity, but that activity isn't leading you to the promised land, yes? There's a freedom from outcome, so to speak. Yes? <laughs> the art is in the living. It's not the outcome. Yeah. <laughs> and you couldn't write a book and have these as lessons for you to arrive at. They just, it's sort of like, uh, who could write a book about the, about the moment to moment ripening of wine, so to speak? Yes? How wine from the grape turns into that, yeah? You wouldn't be able to capture it. You just recognize it through the expression that's causing effects in you, yeah? And so you know the tree by its fruit, as Jesus said. You can't know the tree, but you can know the tree by its fruit. So you get, you get, you get that you are freedom by having freedom, yes? The action-free figure gets somewhat freed from the bondage of self, and that freedom comes from an innate freedom, yeah? Or let's say an innate emptiness. So, mm. Mm. Yeah, so anyone have any questions tonight? your hands if you do if you knew we can explain a little about selfing so that maybe with a an understanding it will help you see it and hopefully that will lead to seeing it as other and then there'll be a loss of interest in what it's implying and what it's inferring and you'll drop from listening to hearing which is what conscious contact is You'll be hearing the narration, but you won't be listening to it, nor will you be following it, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you'll be directed by something other than the thoughts. <laughs> Anu, Anu put her hand up. Who? Anu. Hey, Paul. Anu. Hey, Anu. Hey, um, so when I attend the Zoom meetings and you go over, um, you know, how to recognize that it's you're not the owner of any of these thoughts or feelings or emotions. It all makes sense. But when there's actual like, a, you know, suffering going on, which is either physical or mental or emotional, how, how, what is, how do you create that? I, I, you know, then I guess really confused. And what is the step if you could provide like, a, I, I know there's no blueprint, but what would be the steps? What would be the questions to ask to kind of give some some space where you can, you know, recover a little bit. Well, just ask who is it, who is, uh, who is it that something to be different? Yeah. You can, you can sort of customize the direction of who am I, the self-inquiry, and just ask what is it or who is it that wants things to be different? Yeah. Okay. So and there will be about a relief you see there's a lot going on there's physical pain and then there's suffering that is sort of uh 
Mm. It's sort of like a tail that's put on the donkey, so to speak, yeah? So, yeah, you're getting kicked, your head's getting kicked in. That's pain. And then the tail tells you you're gonna, your head's going to be kicked in for forever, yes? It's never going to change. Your head's always going to be kicked in. And then that's a suffering, you know? Suffering that sort of expands on and enlarges and really mutates the, the pain, yeah? Yeah. The only, see, I, the only thing I can see that causes so much interest to be on the suffering along with the pain is that it's the idea that it's you suffering, yeah? That's the weak link, yes? Yeah, so if you weaken or if you lose this interest in you and you wanting to be representing the, uh, a different uh, condition, yeah, maybe acceptance will change everything because obviously managing and control isn't, so yes? Okay, so um, you said that the, the self is also another, is another thought or it's, or this, uh, the construction of the self is also like a, a mental... The construction of a self, there's selfing that implies that there already is a self. If you could see it under construction, you'd probably cancel the renewal project, yes? So, so the sense that I have is it's not even a thought that there's a me that's suffering or there's a me that's going through all this. It's actually just a feeling in the body. Are there's a, is the I-ness, is, is that the same thing as the separate self? That feeling of, it's like a ground floor. Exactly. There, again, there is no separate self and there's no united self. There is no self. It's an activity. This is the thing. If you keep that block of a self being possible, then you're just doing fucking mental yoga in a sense, trying to get in a more comfortable position. Question that. Even that feeling is is an illusion. Is a sense, yeah. You can put, you can manufacture sense. You can change your feeling. You can do a lot of shit. Well, let's say not you. There's a lot of things. Don't take senses to be true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is what happens. What do you feel like when you're the doer? There's a sense when you're doing, when there's doing, there's a sense of being the doer. You feel it. Yes. Yes. That's manufactured. You weren't having that when you were a baby doing shit. Yeah. That sense got manufactured. Okay. Yeah, and then there's a belief that a sense is more real than a thought and a feeling is more real than something and then it's, you're just caught in fucking levels. But it's the whole point. All of that stuff is built on this presumed nounness of you and that you as a new shouldn't be going through what you as a new is going through. Yeah, and you've tried every freaking thing and then you've doubled back and you try to maybe do it with different combinations. Instead of praying and then meditating, you meditate then pray. You're trying fucking every way to get a, a roll of the dice and it's not working, is it? No. Yeah, there you go. What do, that's, there's this failed system. I mean, if you want to take yourself to be an action figure, surrender. Yeah. Recognize, just admit, thy will is done, yes? And get out of the outcome business because it's not working, yeah? Yeah. As an action figure, to me, as the action figure, the highest level it can rise to is surrender, yeah? It can't... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, are you beaten? Are you outmatched? Are these feelings and, and senses you're having concerning pain, just you're taking them to be chronic, you're beaten, you would try possibly almost anything that you could to get out of it? Um, 
actually many times I'm able to just recognize that it's it's not I'm not the owner of any of these things but you know when it gets really bad then then yes I do get swept away and I feel like I personally when it gets really bad distract yourself watch bloodline on Netflix okay. it's three seasons seriously yeah when you're the shit it's hard to shoo the flies away so you've got to recognize where you're at seemingly it's not you but what level you're on and then you take the appropriate action, which is distraction, yeah? Until there's a chilling out, yes? I think I just needed a reminder. Thank you, Paul. Mm -hmm. I just needed a reminder. Yeah, you'll always get one, honey, if you like, yeah. And I empathize. I have chronic pain for years, yes? I don't have it, whatever. Where I have the lightness isn't that my leg's getting better. Yeah. Yeah. There's less of it my leg. Yeah. So I travel lighter, but the leg isn't better than it was. <laughs> but I travel a whole lot lighter. That's the only thing I can pass on. And if I was in, like, I remember I hit my head in the ocean surfing and I got a I had had a concussion earlier surfing, and this time it shut my nervous system down. Yes, so my body, my I couldn't move. Luckily, I land. I was on my back in the water, and when I was in the hospital, I come from recovery. Yeah, I was in the hospital that night, and I had this weird experience. I had these like burning embers, and when my nervous system kicked back on things were weird and I had this like burning embers in here and based on recovery I said they said well uh, do you want any pain medication I said give me the lowest dose yeah based on the principle I don't want to do drugs and they said like seven to one I said give me one five minutes later I said give me the seven Just fucking shoot me up <laughs> the one wasn't fucking working nor was my by holding on to old ideas, give me the whole shot, yeah, so I can have relief, yes? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Anu. Yeah. Michael's up next. Can I, say, can I share one more thing, Mike, with that before? It's not, It's this isn't all to you, Anu, but you were bouncing off of that. When I, I've been in recovery of, from alcohol and drugs for a while. And when I was younger, I had a sponsor, which is like a mentor. His name was Sai, Sai P. He's passed away. Now, Sai was a really cool older guy. He had been a lawyer and stuff. And he had a, an experience with his sons in, the, in his garage that the, the, uh, he had some gas, gasoline uh, tanks in there they just combusted and he got burnt like third degree burns about over 80 percent of his body yes so he's in the hospital and he's freaking incredible and you couldn't pull the attention off the pain no matter what so this nurse came in after a few days and said to him because he, he she knew that he was in recovery says Hey, I think we, I have an alcoholic on the ward. Would you want to talk to him? And so I said, what the fuck? Can't you see I'm in so much pain? Just leave me alone. But he overrode that because of his honor of recovery. And he said, okay. And they brought the kid in and they talked for a couple hours. And when the kid left, Sai noticed that he had forgot all about the pain. Yeah while doing the service. So he got the nurse back in and he says, get me fucking every alcoholic, just go out on Mission Street and bring them in here. Just freaking in and in and in because he saw, he found something worked. Getting out of oneself. In this way, service. And it had pulled his attention away from the pain for those hours he was involved with that other person. Yes? Yes. Incredible demonstration that I never forgot. So a philosophy isn't going to work at times when the action figure is trying to use it. Yes? You got to get out of yourself. 
You got to get out of the the attention, especially with, with pain. Pain causes the attention to be like a smart bomb. It just goes right to that pain. Yes, 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 yes. You've got to do something at certain points. Saying it's not you may not work. Service will pull you out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks. All right, Mike. Oh, hey, Paul. How's it going? Can you hear me? Good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so my question's about, it's... I uh, another Michael. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I know, but I figured it, I would just jump in anyway. <laughs> um, so my question's about, it's sort of, I mean, it's becoming slowly kind of more obvious, uh, especially with thoughts, that as they happen there's something that tries to jump in and associate it with a sort of self-identification. Yeah. And, you know, that's great. But my, so my question for you is, like, what is your experience with being or coming from the position of what you are as having any sort of influence over what seems to be happening all around you? Like, do you feel like you have any sort of directive will or influence or do you feel like there's there's literally you have absolutely nothing to do with anything that's going on well you could see one as a fact but you still have feelings as if you have something to do with it but they're not your feelings yeah so the program reacts to what's happening the programming of the action figure and it always believes it has some say in the matter. Yet on another level, you see that basically uh, the best I can do is be directed, not directing, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I feel as an action figure, a sense of something moving me that's not a something, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Hmm. That I thought about, for some reason, it works. While I felt like I was running a show, it uh, produced a lot of, lot of uh, anxiety, let's say. The idea of everything truly is seemingly so. It appears to be true or false to you, yes? Hmm. So what appears to be true to the action figure doesn't necessarily appear to be true to you. Yes. Mm. So you may have, there may be a, a large segment of what you are at this moment resting somewhere that the head has no idea is available. And while the head is entertaining everything from its myopic view. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It looks like two things are going on at the same time. But let's say one thing has more of a feeling of something just playing out like horizontal. The other has more of a feeling of vertical, just incredible immediacy, yes? Mm. Like, uh, just showing time as an emperor with no clothes on, yeah? Just boom, 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 mm. boom, mm. yeah. So you have a narration going on and then you have something else going on. Let's say something that holds the narration and everything, but it's not of the narration, yeah? Mm. So in a way, they're going on at the same time. One is always going on, yeah? And it's not of time. The other one is sort of like uh, staccato going in time, basically, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, when a, uh, so when like a decision or a choice is seemingly made, you know, yeah. the action figure doing something, it's is it felt as sort of a a release or like a momentum into the decision or like into the choice it seems to happen from somewhere outside of you or, or how is it perceived from the perspective of what you are or that sort of you know uh well well there's you know from how you are there's no interest in how it's perceived really <laughs> it just goes like everything falls off and it's as if shit hasn't 
never happened in a way. Yeah, there's not much remembering that, that spontaneity. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, and then the narration runs on its own track, <laughs> trying to keep up or trying to claim. Yeah, <laughs> trying to, you know, I've had enough. I'm making a stand or whatever. It wants to be a noun, you know, as it gets moved by everything. Because it's, it's a movement, of, you know, at the same time. So, yeah. One is uh, experiences, uh, like different appearances, different circumstances, different experiences that basically get dropped quickly and then just one long note that's always playing underneath all the surface stuff. So you're more attuned to that one long note playing. There's no idea, it has never started and it doesn't seem like it's going to stop. Mm. And it seems to, uh, you know, with all the disparity and all the distinction and all the differences, it lends a same old, a beautiful sameness to everything. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't mean a, a sameness like, oh, that's old fucking news. I, a sameness that's fresh and alive, you know, like tingling. You can sense it in the air. Yeah. 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 So I would say that's most almost like an echo from our innate condition playing through this place of time and space. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's sort of like I didn't see that pebble hit that pond, but I can see everything is being moved by that manifestation, that mom that momentum of energy, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm surprised. I saw us. Uh, I'm surprised it's summer. You know, I just feel I don't know how it caught. It sort of surprised me. It's July something. It doesn't seem. I'm still waiting for summer to start in some place. <laughs> I'm in the middle of it now. That's sort of what happens a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have a structure in my day. Yeah. Like, I don't have a boss that's sort of demanding me to do some kind of labor to produce an effect, yeah? So, basically, I may have a couple of things I need to take care of, and then the rest is just, like, uh, improv, mostly, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny how something shows up, and then you were thought you were going this way, and suddenly you go that way, and then... You know, it's, yeah. So I'm not in a structure life mm -hmm. as an action figure now, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, I never really did well in a structured life, you know. I, I don't think I've ever had many real jobs, so to speak, because uh, I would disappoint the boss quickly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I thought, you know, well, I don't even know what happened today. I had to do something. I had to make a call. I made the call. It worked out really well. And then basically the rest of the day, you know, just went the way it went. And then I had one job, which is at seven o'clock Pacific time to sit down and get the Zoom. And I'm supposed to have a microphone and headphones. I didn't get that. So, but <laughs> here we are, another, another Zoom. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know if that caught anything, but yes. Uh, and I, I'm a believer in a way, you know, you render unto Caesars what Caesars, yeah? This isn't about nihilism, you know? It's not about the, the total not taking of the body to to prove to yourself that you're not a body. No, it's just, uh, it's much more looser 
and much more relaxed, I feel. Yeah? Yeah. The body has its little drives. Like I've discovered in my body that if I'm aligned with something bigger than me, it brings out the best in me, like recovery community. Yeah? So I'll do sh shit for recovery that I wouldn't do for myself. So if I get a call and it's someone who needs help, I'll show up. Yeah? But if I, you know, if I needed help, I wouldn't show up, you know? <laughs> but I would. So, yeah. So I found that out. I found that uh, the action figure does well if it has a purpose. Yeah? Now, the purpose it first tried to adopt was a spiritual purpose of transcendence and shit. Mm -hmm. And then that sort of dropped. And now it's more of being of service, yeah? Not doing service, but being of service, like being available all the time, because yeah. that's our nature. Yeah. So the action figures, uh, you know, it's come under a lot of changes. Before I was incapable of having a real viable relationship with other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I can. Uh, receive and give uh, acceptance and love. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, things like that. So, but the beautiful thing, those effects weren't watched over each second. You know, they just showed up. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't looking for shit to happen. I just observed shit happened. Yes, so it was cool, and it is cool. Yeah. Do you feel uh, any, like, do you ever have a sort of intuitional um, understanding sort of presented into your experience? Like, sort of, like, um, like, there's a, you know, when you, like, are learning information or, you know, let's say, I don't know if you, like, read still or, you know, if, if you're reading information about, I don't know, something spiritual and you're sort of integrating it into your understanding no, I try not to do any of that because this is like a, a little family bakery. Yeah. We're just going to keep making the same muffins. So mm. seems to be a good recipe. We're not trying to expand. And I rather <laughs> not listen to live people. And I, dead I can't hear them because they're not alive. And I don't listen to videos or tapes. Mm. I wouldn't want to. If some other person shares, I may understand what they're uh but i don't have weight to it yeah that's not my that's not the seed assignment the seed assignment was was brought to a sense of the negative way so to speak like a, a like way woo way that's what registered yeah mm -hmm. a lot of other people speak more in the affirmative they want to they want to describe what we are i want to describe what we're not i don't want to i don't want to describe what we are I want people to find out that, yeah? Yeah? Knowing it is a big, big obstacle to being it, yeah? So, yeah. So I don't want to, no, I don't read anything spiritual or anything. Do you read it all? I haven't read much lately, okay. yeah. But I loved reading for a long time. But I don't, it doesn't seem like I can... Uh, I think I read a book a couple months ago. Yeah. <laughs> I, really, I can recommend a great book. <laughs> yeah, the Raw Shock. I, what is it? Uh, Raw I think it's text. Raw Shock uh, Text. Yeah, great. Michael book. wrote it. That's a very, that was a great book because it had a lot of novel ideas. I like novel ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So. And I really like, uh, there's a guy, Ben Oakry, I would read again, called the, Famish, the Famishing Road, I think. It's a great magical realism. He's a, a, an African writer. It's a great book. Mm. Fantastic, I felt. So, yeah, but that was, that was years, that's like 20 years ago. Yeah, no. I don't do, uh, you know, if you want to hear what I do during a day, obviously I woke up from whatever. 
and then I fake like I'm asleep for a while. <laughs> Because I like that, I like a period of time just laying in like a dead corpse thing. My girlfriend gets up, does whatever. I come out, you know, love seeing her. We have a dog and a cat. They show up. Yeah. I have to play with the dog, feed the cat. Um, and then if I have nothing to do, I do some work. I stretch and I do some Qigong. Yeah, which I've learned for a long time and to take care of the body somewhat. And then uh, I loiter mostly, have a coffee. Then I do a Zoom in the morning or something or some people call me from different countries and they're having, they're having a problem with their daughter or something who's using drugs and shit and they, they ask me for some advice and stuff like that yeah and then i have great coffee drink eat some food go swimming come back do zoom <laughs> that's probably that's it yeah yeah i hear a lot i see a lot i feel a lot i smell a lot i taste a lot <laughs> <laughs> all day <laughs> I never get gypped I'm always here yeah. yeah sleeping awake it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah wait can I ask you one more question all right sure are you yeah sorry I know I'm taking time are you um so when you fall asleep do you notice a break in your awareness even when you enter deep sleep or are you just there from 24 7 <laughs> uh well the head goes out f fast the brain yeah yeah but then there's an awakeness there so and then dreamings occur but if you notice most dreamings are of the brain they're mostly pictured as bodies yeah yeah so you're dreaming of bodies and uh, sometimes I get a bonus dream, which is surfing or a freebie dream, which is drug use without getting arrested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, then you go into a phase, which is like a trance in the morning where you're seemingly awake to this world and but the body influence isn't that great yet so you're just seemingly in a body but you're not of that body yeah that's a nice place and then you just get up and do what what's you know whatever yeah that's really interesting what that's really interesting thank you i appreciate your uh candor it's nice well yeah all it is is it's just the loss of interest in what you used to be really interested in, to tell you the truth. And that loss of interest in that mental idea pictured as a physical object, you know, a long-lasting, independent, separate thing, that interest freed from that preoccupation enriches, you know, the, the experience, yeah? yeah? But the experiences never, never overwhelm the emptiness never that's the beauty of it yeah they can be beautiful patterns of the clouds but they never uh the sky is the sky is the sky is the sky yes mm. so there's uh, interest and attention that's not directed by the head is presence that's what presence is my feeling is interest and attention not directed by the head so you're freed up and that attention and interest uh usually is busy moving and being sent places yeah when that chore or that preoccupation is called off it rests somewhat and has enough interest and attention to deal with seeing the hummingbird that enters the picture and stuff like that it's not being overwhelmed by thought and it's there's a rest there's a 
sense of something there when interest and attention isn't being directed and moved. Yeah. Mm. I feel that's presence, if you want. That's how I feel it. Mm. So that becomes a very, that's like a, the lightest anchor that keeps you grounded, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because there's no, see, most people can't see. I couldn't, we don't see or don't sense what's always here. We need something not to be here to, to see an appearance of it, yes? But what we are has never shown up or never left. It's here completely. So uh, the thought of being Paul is, is something that comes later. It's missed. There has never been an arrival and there's never going to be a departure yeah, of that which we are. It just is. Yeah. So that can have a that can have an influence here. What you're of can influence what you're in, for sure. Mm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. See, things aren't convincing you. There's a convincing of you and then you see something. Yes. You're you and I are the dreaming. Yes. Mm. Yes, we are the dreaming of the dreaming. We're not in a dream. We're not the object that we're not the dreamt that we're constantly taking ourselves to be. We're the dreaming. We are the activity of this constant verbing. Yeah, there's no time to observe and sit and stop and look. You're always in the water. Yeah, when you think you're the witness, that's part of the water. Yeah. There's no, you're not, you're not coming on the shore observing what's happening. You're the, you are the what's happening. Yes, you are the what's happening. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You see the interpretation. Uh, see, if you're out to lunch, you need to be told what's going on and the head will play that role. Yeah. But if you're here, it's not necessary to constantly be told that you're here. <laughs> you don't need, like, when you walk in the room, you are in the walking of the room, in the room. You don't need some, oh, you just walked in this room, you know, thank you. I, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, it's, it's sort of like when you're blind, you need someone to lead the blind. You're not blind anymore. This, this narration of this something else that you've made to be yourself, like it says in the Course in Miracles, isn't doesn't play the role it used to play because you're not blind. Yeah, you're seeing. Yes, yeah. if you're blind, you got to be led. You got to base a lot of you got to base a lot of shit on assumptions and hopings and supposings. But when you see, you don't need to be led. Yes. The narration just becomes a source of comedy, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like comedy central. It's like a satire. It's like watching Bill Hader do a Vincent Price uh, fucking thing. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> you know, you become a skit on SNL all the time, Saturday Night Live, but it's like Monday Night Morning Live or Wednesday afternoon live it's uh, it's you know <laughs> yeah i just felt uh you know what drove me when i was younger was a lot of misunderstanding yeah I truly believed I could get out of self as self, yeah, which wasn't true and isn't true. So I needed a lot of uh, rude awakenings and uh, rude realizations to realize the incapability of using what you are as what you're not to look for what you are. It's just a total futile endeavor yeah that's where the real the real liberation is from the need to be liberated that's the real liberation it's true the real liberation is there's no need to change a fucking thing unless there needs to change a thing <laughs> yeah 
yeah, it just is. So, yeah. Just come back, bro, if you like. And uh, yeah, we'll move on, eh? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Michael. Now, JP. JP. <clears throat> Hi, Paul. Um, I'm, it's, it's more like, uh, I think, an affirmation. I, I, I was very much um, relating to what Anu was sharing about uh, this sense of I. Um, the last couple of weeks, you know, I've been looking into this sense of I, the me, you know, the, the me that makes everything really heavy. <laughs> and, you know, and there was kind of what came to me was was there was an expectation, this idea, which is a thought that somehow the more I look at this, the less this sense of me is supposed to be. And it just wasn't going that way at all. You know, and and then one of the things that hit me was what Geo shared. You know, it's like the dream appears more real when I'm awake to the dream. And, you know, and what I'm seeing is that it's like the sense of me, it's it's not going to go until this body drops. And there's nothing wrong with the sense of me. You know, it's the attention I put to it that is, well, kind of the problem, not that there is a problem, but this is how I misunderstand. And, um, and, then, and then what I started to see was, you know, really there's only two, two options. You know, there's, there's the action figure, seeing things from the perspective of the action figure, or there's seeing things from the perspective of who I am reality. And, you know, and somehow, you know, what's been happening is, is that less and less the attention is on the perspective of the action figure. Um, I mean, I had a really great example this morning. I went shopping with the wife to the supermarket and I was really, I was just really pissed off with her. You know, there was just this irritability. I just wanted to take it out on her. And, um, and all of a sudden there was a pause and the pause took me to the attention move to who I am, reality. And one of the first things that happened was all the words and the thoughts and the ideas about why I was pissed off with her kind of just, the words just disappeared. And all I was left with was a physical sensation, you know, that had no words. And that was a completely different thing than what it looked like from the perspective of the action figure. And, and um, you know, so, so for me, you know, in a, in a very concrete way, I can say that, you know, it's, it's, I didn't even have to do anything about getting rid of this sense of the, the action figure or moving from the action figure to who I am reality. All of this just happened by itself. And, and uh, after this pause, and um, so, so I, I relate very much, you know, to this, um, this question of, you know, the sense of I, the sense of me, when is it going to go? I see it's never going to go. <laughs> um, you know, it's not about whether it goes or not. It's about where my attention is, you know, and, and uh, when my attention is not stuck there from the perspective of the action figure, it's really fine for the action figure to have what it's having and to experience what it's experiencing. Um, so I just wanted to share because this is, I mean, this is current, it's what's going on. And um, yeah, always good to see you, Paul, and all the, and everyone in the group as well. All right, JP, so there's a seeing of the sense of I, yes? Yes. That's all you need. That's the negation of the sense of I, of being I, <laughs> is the seeing of it, yes? Yeah. You're not the seen, you're the seeing, yeah? That simple statement by Hoang Po really clears out a lot of confusion. Whatever can be perceived cannot be perceiving. So in a way, whatever can be seen cannot be that which is seen. Yeah, so you're there, 
noticing the sense of I and then noticing a desire from another mental aspect to want to get out of that sense of I. Yes, there's, that camera never blinks. Yeah, it doesn't have any opinion. It's just on. Yeah, that's So you see, let's say, you're in a consequential experience. Then someone explains the consequential experience, maybe after a life of addiction or jail and recovery, that, that the, the cause or a main culprit of that was this idea of self. So now the thief has been objectified, and now there's a seeing of the thief, yes, where before... It was just a thief seeing all day. Now there's a seeing of the thief. Yeah. Okay. Now, the seeing of the thief is now claimed. Yeah. Because whatever uh, you as what you are become aware of, the mental state is going to take advantage of. It's going to claim. Yes. So there's a seeing of the policeman, of the thief, yeah? You have knowledge of it, that's, I've been in three rehabs, da, 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 da. now I know the culprit, yeah? This is what ruined my life, let's say. But now that seeing in time is long past, and now there's a seer called the policeman, yeah? Now this is the new JP, looking at the old JP, but as the Who song would be, New boss is the same as the old boss. Yeah. <laughs> they just have different uniforms. So, okay. Now, through an understanding and through hearing invitations, you've now recognized that there was a seeing of this, of the thief. Yeah. Pure. But that seeing is still seeing, but now the emphasis is on once again the seer, which is the policeman. Yeah. Now you start living the policeman's narrative about the thief, where before you only lived the thief's narrative about the police and the judges and this and that. Yes. So now, and basically you realize it was better when I was just the thief. The policeman has this fucking real bone up its butt about perfection and I got to be really fucking good and something like that and I've got to meditate longer and see more and do more service man I feel like I'm more contracted than ever and the only way I'm going to get relief from the policeman is to get loaded really in a lot of ways and so it sort of makes sense because man you suck sober so fucking get a drink yeah so all right so, but there's a seeing of that. The, you, there's a seeing of the claiming of the seeing because the policeman didn't see the thief. There was a seeing of the thief and there was no thief really. But there was, in this example, there was a seeing of the thief. That seeing got claimed just like the seeing that was there before was claimed as the thief. Now the seeing of that has been claimed as the policeman. Yeah, but the seeing is still seeing. It's that's all it is is seeing. Yeah, so basically you catch it a few times. Yeah, and basically I don't know. You get a sense or an intimacy that there's all there is is seeing. There's never any interruption. <laughs> you know what I mean, the seeing never becomes the seer. It, with the uniform of the thief or the policeman or the robe or the fucking whatever. Yes? There's just seeing. Yeah? There's just awareness. Yeah? And we are of that. Yes? So, uh, that way... Mm, what you appear to be is just coming and going like everything else. Yeah? But all of that coming or going has to have a space to appear in and has to be appearing to something. And it's not appearing to the policeman or the thief. It's appearing to what's seen. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. 
which is always available at all times, no matter where you are or what condition you think you're in, it's there. It's never not there. <laughs> yeah. Rest assured, really. So you want to struggle with the surface shit? Yeah. You know, whatever. It's not you. Yes. Yeah. You want to think you got super clear? It's not you. There's just a basic patented not you. Yeah. Which allows, uh, well, you'll find out what it allows. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. See, there's selfing, and then the selfing is applied to the seeing of the selfing, and then the selfing is applied to the seeing of the seeing of the selfing. Yes, it's just, it's, not, it's mechanical. It's not volition. There isn't any you that did it, that shouldn't have done it. There isn't. It's just a, a mechanical programming, yeah? It's brought by the light to get in contact with something. It sort of like bumps into something, yeah? And it claims it, yeah? And that claiming it, so the seeing is turned into a seer, yeah? And then it's, it takes a dualistic bent, and then the seeing is now the seer seen, which is subject-object, yes? Which is, <laughs> which, which is the mother and father of all duality. All dualistic viewing comes from subject-object. So we are now in this split experience of subject object sometimes you feel like you're being thought about as an object by the head sometimes you feel like you're the thinker which would be the subject of the head yes you're neither there's not a winning side and a losing side both sides of the coin are, are from the same currency yes seemingly so Every one of us as recovered people got caught up in, I was bad, I want to be good, yeah? So the first five years of sobriety, I couldn't take a shit. I was being watched by the policeman incessantly. What, what's my motives? What am I doing? And finally, I started to enjoy sobriety after a few years, yeah? Which is freedom from the policeman and the thief, not freedom from the, poli the thief as the policeman. That's bondage of self, yes? Yeah, it's freedom from both, yeah? Because they're apparitions, they're, they're emblems of a, of a movement. There's no thing there, there's no self. That's why we use the terminology of selfing. I don't even want to call it self because that gives it too much credit. It's selfing. And the movement of selfing has a little magic trick. And based on our rudiment understanding that we live from, the programming of the action figure, that time is linear, it can fool us every fucking second. Because what it does is it claims something and it makes something out of that claiming. So. The idea of you as the doer comes after the doing, yet it's implied to be before. So now you think you're the doer of all doing. Yeah? That's, that's the move. It's a magic trick. because And it only can fool us because of the programming. We believe there was a past. And then there's this moment that the past is turning into the present, and then there's going to be an incredible momentum going into a future. Yeah? So the, ma the, the magician, knowing its audience has that programming, does a little trick. That which, com which comes after the idea of you is presupposed to be before. There you go. And it has a narrative back it up. It has memories that picture you as that which was before and that you're going to be there later. Yes? Yeah. This is a giant production. Yeah? It's like people think they're on a ride and they want to get off. They are the ride. This is the ride. Thinking it can go on rides and get off rides. You, this is the ride you're on. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yes. Yeah. I just feel like it goes better when it's not called you. <laughs> Tell you the truth. I do. You know, you're not getting out of the ride. You're not. 
know? <laughs> I can say, well, if I was awake, I wouldn't have got run over by the car. Well, I was awake and I got run over by the car. I've never not been awake. So give me a break. <laughs> the awakeness didn't cause it. It did it. It would have not caused it. It was there. Yes. Something happened in the story and it happened. Yeah. <laughs> you think everything's going to be a huge game changer. Yeah. It may in a subtle level, but you're going to probably go through what you're going to need to go through here. Yes. Shit. Yeah. People think non-duality is going to, it's like a get out of jail free card. Yeah. It's no. Any trying to use non-duality is a mistaken understanding of non-duality, humbly, in my view, yeah, in the view that I'm captured by it. It is, yeah. It's better not to try to use it. Just let it use you. <laughs> yeah. The idea has an incredible potency. It does. It's a game changer, literally. Yeah. It's not about winning and losing in the game. It's a game changer. Yeah. You, you see you're not that. Yeah. You don't picture yourself as being a super you. You don't, you know, what is that? Create a realization of you being incredibly great. No. You see it's not you. <laughs> yeah. And then an acceptance comes into the field of the action figure and uh, the action figure does quite well in that atmosphere. It does. It doesn't do well as the center of the universe. It's a little too much pressure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Perfection's not in its programming. It's just, it's not, it's perfect as it is. Yes. This idea of conceptual perfection is never going to be met, ever. And this idea that it's going to be used as a chariot of the gods is ridiculous. And heaven isn't, doesn't have a golf course you can drive in a little golf cart on. It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Everything we dream of is pictured as a body. Yes. That's not the happy dream. <laughs> the happy dream isn't comprised of being a body. The happy dream yeah, is seeing you're not. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine 18 holes in heaven would be a drag just like they are here, probably? Shit. <laughs> we used to have a saying you could drop an alcoholic in heaven, it would be hell in a day. You know, it's just that simple. We override everything. We override everything. We make shit out of nothing. We're in an incredible event going on with a myopic view. It's insane. Yes. We want to think of ourselves so great, but we are so far greater than we could ever imagine. Yeah. We're making shit out of nothing. Yeah. My cat isn't flipping out tonight by thinking about next week. It ain't. It sleeps like fucking. It's unbelievable. Have you ever. The cats see. They seem like they, their postures while they're sleeping, they're like the kings and queens of sleeping. Yeah, they're just unbelievable. Yeah. We're making shit out of nothing. Most people who call me are upset about what something that's actually not happening right now. What are you supposed to do? You can only be so helpful. Yes. What's the real solution to an imaginary problem? There isn't any solution. There's no need for one. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. So, all right, thanks, JP. Thanks, JP. Patrick. We have the uh, Patrick's next. Oh, Patrick. Oh. Um. Patrick, who, who uh, unmuted Patrick? I, I think I'm unmuted. Uh, Oh, there's going to be hell to pay. All right. All right, Patrick. So last night I stumbled across this video where, like, I guess there's a ritual with monks and they can just lay there and, like, they leave their body. And 
my question to you is, is like at this point, what interest do you really have being like in your body at this point? Like having to feed this thing and feed your cat and fucking talk to people that are sleepwalking through their life. Like what interest do you really have being here anymore? Don't you want to just leave your body? No. I tried that for years. <laughs> I think the best know how you now how you demonstrate leaving the body by not doing anything. Yeah. So no, I don't have interest in that. Yeah. I don't know where where I have interest, but it's not in that. I don't. Uh, that which that wants to leave the body is identified as the body. So it's yeah, yeah. So, and you know, if you get frustrated about things, that passes quickly. Yeah. You live that idea of a day at a time, but you don't have that idea of a day at a time. You live that idea a day at a time. And uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Patrick, no, I don't know. Any other aspect of the question? <clears throat> well, I mean, like usual, I had already answered it before I even asked you and it was kind of pointless anyway, because um, as soon as I had the question and I put the raised hand thing, then immediately I was like, well, it's only my mind that could possibly start to pontificate about not wanting to be in this body anymore. And it's just more selfing and more yeah. fucking bullshit. Yeah. So See, the, like, well, I'm, not, well, I'm not even fucking talk. I'm not wanting to be in the body. Yeah. It's not the body that gives it the meaning. It's the identification as the one who wants to leave the body. Yeah, that's the. That's what gain. That's what injects interest into a. It's like a. It's like a, a, a concept for a story. It's presented in a, a, the first sentence, and then it usually dies by the second sentence, but then there's a lot of times it hitches up to some interest, and then it extends. Yeah turns into a little story, hopefully a short one. And then you, you read through the pages and shit like that. Yeah. So thank God it was answered uh, right where you're sitting quickly. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> and thanks, man. Thanks, thanks Patrick. Uh, Graham's next. You know, that whole problem of thinking you know what to say, and then saying it anyways, even though you're cognizant that, you know, it's just a, another program running. Um, about that, <laughs> I have a quote from Mr. Gadada. He said, uh, you will receive everything you need when you stop asking for what you do not need. And I think that's pretty essential here, um, even though it's not you asking for what you do not need, it's just a program, but the, the point stands that the suffering is built on the expectation of pleasure and the failure to achieve that permanently. So pleasure is only possible when, uh, when accompanied by pain, and it's a, it's a momentary release from that pain, but then it goes back to pain. So the whole, the whole system has failed from the beginning. That's my share. Thank you, Graham. <laughs> Wait, were we in a dream last week? And yeah, yeah. Something <laughs> <that, laughs> about the mind. Oh, good. Recycling, yeah. Well, the idea Recycling. of, you know, the pleasure pain thing is sort of Buddhism 101, yes? So, you know, there's uh, 
but I find the real relief is uh, doesn't come from trying not to have desires, but just to see that you're not the one who has the desire. Yeah. I find yeah. there's relief. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Most people go hunting like for the wrong prey, so to speak. All right. I've got to stop having desires. Well, in fact, you never had the desire. The desire had you, really. Yes. So mm -hmm. I find uh, a real clarity in uh, the negation of non duality. Yes. That's seamless. It doesn't uh, fall down a rabbit hole. It just, it's pristine and, uh, yeah, to the point. Yes. Beautiful, really. Exquisite, really. I yeah. mean, it's just un. It's just, you know, it's the final answer to all questions. That's the beauty of it. Yes. Yeah. It, because it takes away the need to ask a question, which is uh, a damn good answer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, it's been, you know, over time, I can see, uh, it, it plays the role of, of the last answer and nothing else I was introduced to in this life played that role. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I feel, you know, the underlying premise being ourselves reality really, uh, explains everything truly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the answer before the question. Yeah. You know? being ourselves reality so uh yeah and then having the understanding about something is going to claim to be the reality but that will not that's not the reality in a sense it's the reality but it's in a, a, a posture of what you're not and so by being armed with warnings about how the system reintroduces itself and seeing uh because volition would be of the system the system is mechanical but its reaction as the system to the system as us is volitional we believe we're doing it and we should knock it off or it's determined for for that to stop for us to be what we are and it isn't yeah it has nothing to do with us it's a mechanical thing. And uh, I find a lot of people I speak with, that's where there's a little stuckness to it. They still think they have relevance, that somehow or another, it's their foot that's in the door. No, the space uh, includes the foot in the door. The space includes the foot out of the door. The space includes a foot with no door. The space includes a door with a foot. Yeah, it's just the space. <laughs> it can't be moved out of itself by what appears in it. Yes? That space is what we are of. Yeah? Anything is possible to appear in it, and yet not anything that appears in it qualifies as a, as a, a defection of it or as a uh, an inhibitor of it or as a lessening of it. Yes. We give it all that. We There's a mental state going on that's giving all that shit the meaning to be able to obscure the light or diminish the light. I don't believe any of it. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think of the statement? If you can't see through it, see it through. If you can't what? If you can't see through it, see it through. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, what someone was sharing earlier. So if you can't see through the pain, see it through. Yes. So therefore, use some fucking skillful means. Yeah. Distract yourself or the suffering. Really. Yes. So some people get really and I can I, you know, I understand the the pain of the body can neutralize any philosophy. But you're not trying to use the philosophy on the pain of the body. Yeah. 
you're hoping that the philosophy has taken hold before the pain of the body. So before the pain overrides you, the understanding is there. And if not, then see it through, which is just do something to distract yourself, do some service, do something to get out of the neighborhood that you seem to be in. Yes? Yeah. That's how I, I would see it. So a lot of times, uh, people, when the shit hits the fan, they may try to apply non-duality as a way of getting rid of the shit or turning off the fan. That, uh, that usage doesn't usually work. Yes. So I think it's more of a, of a state of before that brings an influence into what comes after. It's not when the after is before and you try to bring it in as a fucking like a lifesaver or something, it doesn't seem to work well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, non-duality is a fact. Yeah. It's a fact. So what comes after it uh, can't be to determine factual in a sense, except from that fact. Yeah, truly, because the everything else is an appearance or a seemingly so. So in recovery, we talk about false evidence appearing real. Uh, how can false evidence, how does false evidence con constantly appear real? Was, well, it's appearing real to false evidence, really. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So, yeah. To prove our own truth, we give truth to false evidence. Yes. The, the activity of the mental state. It's a tense, constantly trying to reinforce its reality by the denial of what's so. Like it said, we read the other last night in a different group a statement out of The Course of Miracles, which says, you know, uh, firm in faith in this something else you've made to be yourself and actively denying what you are. So the firm in faith, it's not you firm in faith, there's faith, there's firmness in, of faith in something else as being you, yeah, is the act of denial of what you are. Now, if you ask people right now, they wouldn't say they're in the act of denying what they are. But in the fact, that's actually what's happening. Yeah. The assuming that you are that something else is an act of denying what you are. It's a two sided coin. So, yeah. And then if you want to affirm what you are from that which you're not, it's just more reinforcing that which you're not. That's like, uh, you know, like if you ever entered the Boy Scouts, they have like not seminars. Well, the first not <laughs> that non-duality undoes is that one. Yeah, is uh, if you try to have interest in getting out of self, that's more interest in self. So that's a basic conundrum that's explained, you know, in non-duality. Yes. Yeah. So why is me being interested in getting out of me? reinforcing the idea that I'm in me. Well, that's why. <laughs> you're using what you are to get out of what you are as what you're not. That's why it's not working. So it's, all it does is reinforce what you're not. Yes. Yeah. Now, when there's a seeing of that, that's a... That brings down a lot of fucking house of cards. Yeah, so... Where does that come from? It comes from the fact of non-duality. Yeah. You are what you're looking for. All the while looking for everything else or looking for it as an idea or a concept or as a goal, you are what's looking. You are what you're looking for. Yeah. That's the fact of non-duality. Yeah. It's not like you have to be in a certain condition to be what's looking. No, what's seeing right now is what is looking. Yeah. Now what is looking is seen as a who that's looking and it's using 
the what, which is the seeing, to look for the seeing. Yeah, that's why we're blind to it. That's the, that's the assumption being ourselves reality. So if being ourselves reality, there's a using reality to attain reality, that would be a great way of hiding the fact that we're reality, obviously. Yeah, so. Anyone else, Mike? Yes, uh, thanks, Graham. John, John R. John, John R. from Oz. Yeah, John hey, R., what's um, going on? Hey, Paul. Yeah, thanks for being there. It's a great uh, meeting. Um, I'm just wondering what your take would be on the value of rituals in as much as, um, I don't know, like you say the action figure, you know, it, the brain sees things in a, in a kind of a picture. So I'm just talking loosely here that there seems to be some value in rituals uh, maybe the 12 steps let's say that you know that that process of doing it with another person the surrender yes you know, and those things so, so there I, I think i don't know what i think but there's a, a transition from reality to mystical there possibly or am i just making a story but it seems to have been a case in John's story, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if the action figure has a, a, pre, a, a predilection, ritual can be a, a big opener. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like rituals. I mean, yeah. shooting cocaine was a ritual. Yeah, well, the, 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 yeah. you talk about... Um, being moved by and and the word that came up for me was passion um so you know during our lives or whatever there's been passion directed in many different areas you know and um some of them healthy and some less so um and that brings into mind the spiritual principles that is spoken about in the steps and of course the 12th step which which brings me to you know um carry this message to other people yeah anyway I, yeah. I did a prayer once I, I don't know if it matters or there should be a health warning on it because the result of the prayer was um, quite life-changing but it was something like uh, make me the man I came here to be show me in ways I cannot miss I'm new at this so make it really clear and bring it on now um, and as you say, there's, there seems to be, a, you'll get what you get. And um, as I review the, the decade after that, you know, uh, my life was turned upside down. And the king I thought I was, was not such a benevolent king. He was a tyrant. And that crown had to get toppled, as it were, in an archetype sort of picture. Um, and that was a very painful experience. But reviewing it, um, I'm here talking to you coming from another place, as it were. Yeah. 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 Well, I find a lot of all of this is captured in uh, being the dreaming of the dream. We're going to dream ourselves out of the dream. And so some people yeah. are dreaming themselves out of the dream by coming to Saying Zoom, some people are doing rituals, some people are doing prayers, some people are doing service, some people are taking care of the dog, whatever. It could be anything, but basically it could have the spirit of being another act of dreaming oneself out of the dreaming with the material of the dreaming. Yeah? Yeah. So yeah, I see no uh I don't I don't see any conflict with uh, because he, uh, you know, that which is so can in time can seem to be developing. Yes. That which is already so in time can seem to be a developing. Yeah. You, that which you always are 
in time, it seems like you can arrive there, yes? So you've got a, a fact, and then there's the, there's the, twi there's the, uh, like, drawing out the fact through time to make it look different, yes? But the facts, the facts, the facts, yeah? But in other words, I find, I always found it very soothing, the statement of, you know what? All this stuff, yes, you know, self-inquiry, whatever. But in fact, your whole life could be in the act of dreaming oneself out of the dreaming, yes? By, by using the material of the dreaming. And as you do, the dream gets happier, yeah? Hallelujah. I found that very, very relaxing when I would hear that, yeah? Because you can't lose. It doesn't matter, yeah? You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Everything I've ever done has been used to for value. Yes. The worst thing turned into the best thing. It's just, it's like, I think there's a possibility of, let's say the amount of notes you're going to play in this action figure sequence. Yeah. I believe that each and every one of those notes can bring a, a, a more uh, more timber to the next note, yeah? Like everything is valuable. Like recovery gave me that possibility because I saw people who were so sure their life was worthless, yeah? And everyone else was sure their life was worthless and they entered recovery and that, that worthless life was recycled and was used to bring great value to their lives and other people's lives, yes? Yeah, that to me is like dreaming you're dreaming yourself out of the dreaming, yeah? Recovery is like that for me, yes? Yeah, so rituals, I don't, I'm not engaged in any now, but I know people who are. But when I was doing the drugs, it was a ritual, shooting cocaine, completely, yeah? So this... Uh, Rituals are a are, are sort of an archetype. They trigger something, yeah, on a more imaging, not a thought-provoking, but an imaging, yeah? It, they mean a lot. So they can, yeah, they can be quite useful in the, uh, like, trudging the road to happy destiny in the Course of Miracles is sort of like dreaming oneself out of the dreaming, and the dream gets happier. It's the same thing, yes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. John, take it easy, brother. You guys don't consider these Zooms a ritual? Yes, of course. <laughs> yes. We come here, there's a, and something gets cooked up. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm amazed at it, because, uh, yeah. Me too. Uh, there's no other hands up. There's no other hands. What time is it now, eh? You know? 8.37. Oh, so let's end, eh? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do we have, hey, I wanted to announce something. I'm sorry I didn't do it earlier. But a woman who used to come to the Zoom, and she came to a lot of the recovery Zooms, and uh, uh, Kay passed away. She was, she was uh, from Chicago. She passed away just a week or so ago. I don't know what un under what circumstances, but uh, yes. So there's going to be, for the people that had met her through the Zoom, there's going to be a memorial, I think, on August 21st that David, who sets up the recovery Zooms from England, is setting up. So there'll be more word to it. But I wanted to let you know that uh, she passed away. So a number of us, I never had any, I never met her physically, but yeah. Yeah, so, yep. And uh, any other we have a meeting Saturday. What's today? Thursday? No, Wednesday. Tomorrow there's a meeting recovery, 10.30 Pacific time. 
Do I do anything? No, nothing in the afternoon. And then Saturday, we have a live meeting at 1.30 in Marin City, and it, the information's on the website, and it will be a Zoom also, Pacific time. And it should work, because I think we've located where the, the, uh, the modem is, and so we'll have it right next to the, the room outside. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and uh all right any uh let me just say goodbye to everyone mike thank you for all the service yeah. linda i think linda's coming don't worry linda i'll be around yes thank you paul yes i'll see you there thank you john nice to see you hey paul i knew listen I knew do what you can to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. And just ask for the wisdom to know when to put the ball down. Something else will pick it up. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks also to Grant and uh, JP. I, everything you said also helped me a lot along with what Paul said. Thank you. Great. Great. And there's people will stay later too. So if anyone wants to give a talk, I mean a talk. Ashley from Dallas. Nice to see you, Ashley. Uh, we got Kerry and Judith. There they are. Yes. Uh, yes. Nice to see you guys. I'll see you soon, sooner or later. It's in the cards. Yes. Yeah. Yes, well, you're sending Linda. Linda's going to be another star coming to to meet us so that she'll be able to give you a rundown of what things are like over here. Uh, who's coming? Linda. I'm coming. Yeah, you're going to Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Great. So you're stopping and seeing us first, then going to Hawaii. Exactly. Just to rub it in. All right. I understand. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah, good. You'll have to report back. Yes. Absolutely. I want you to leave a few things there without telling them where it is. Yes. <laughs> nice to see you, uh, my little Hawaiian boat. My Hawaiian uh -huh. Nice to see you, my friend. We got Robert from, from New Zealand, my, my favorite Kiwi. There he is. You're welcome, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I think you just talked to me. Sorry. I just want to say that this was a great meeting. It was really, really, really nice. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's well, thank all of us. Let's let's give a hand to all the squares. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Nothing could happen without you, that's for sure. It's a pleasure, Gio. Thanks so much for holding this space. Appreciate it. Nice to see you. Robert French, again, I just said hello. Let's go to see who else is here. This Kenneth from Vancouver. Nice to see you, Kenneth. Yes. Yeah. Buddhism is making sense now. Yes. Good. <laughs> Very good. Yes. We got uh, Art. Oh, Art from New Mexico, man. Art's a, a fucking really good football player. Yeah. You can give my girlfriend a good run for her money. Yes. Nice to see you, Art. I hope, uh, give me a personal call sometime. I will, man. Tell me how you're doing. All right. Lasko, it was a pleasure to see you. And there she is, Janine, I think. She's in the dock. Yes. <laughs> nice to see you, too. Hopefully, I'll see you Saturday. Yes. I'll talk with you tomorrow, Z, probably. And there's Alex. Alex is the greeter of Zen Bitch Slap. Yes. Yes. Thank you for the donation, Alex. And, uh, and really, just a pleasure to see you. Yeah, all the time. I'm. Th we're thinking a little bit about coming back east in October. Great. Yeah, yeah. So we would gum up the Great Barrington and stuff like that, probably. Awesome. Based on the conditions, obviously. Yeah. So, JP, nice to see you, JP, again. Thank you for uh, your share tonight. Yes, we got John W. John W., he's up in Melbourne. Yes, nice to see you, John. We're definitely going to come back to Australia if the world doesn't collapse in itself. Yeah. 
And we'll meet, eh? We'll meet and have a nice coffee. Uh, common folk coffee or something. There's a good one down in the peninsula we had. I don't know what's the name of it, but it was pretty good. I brought it home with me. We got Graham. 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 Uh, Graham uh, yes. You've got a lively mind. Thank God it isn't yours. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> yeah. We got, oh, we got uh, Walter from the Amsterdam. Nice to see you, Walter. Good morning. Good morning, brother. Nice to see you very much. You know, you got to, you got to, we may have to have you try to come down to Italy. How far, you're not that far from Italy, eh? No, uh, we talked about it before, you know, I would love to go to Italy. I know oh, yeah. it. That's still right. 1,500 kilometer, you know. All right. Well, we'll talk as it gets closer. Yeah, yeah. sure. It would be beautiful. i show All you right. Italy. Yeah. Mary G, nice to see you, Mary. Are you going with your friend Linda to Hawaii? No. Yes? No. All right. Next time. Yeah. We got Tommy, Tommy from Ireland. Tommy sent me some lovely art, which I have in the room, and some music I haven't listened to yet. I've got to put it on this, the, the CD player in the car. All right, let's, uh, let's see who else. We got another Mike there. I think it's Mike O, I don't know. He seems comfortable. We got Steve, he seems comfortable. Steve T, nice to see you, Steve. We got Amelia, the love of my life. She's cooking there in the kitchen. I can't see it, but I can smell it. It's very nice. We got Vlad, Vlad, my main man in Portugal now. Yes. We got to make some kind of meeting happen when we're over there. Nice to see you, Vlad. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, brother. It has more to do with you than ever with me, brother. This is a lovely space. It is. We've got Sanda. Sanda, she's our last uh, Indian survivor. Yes, we got to make sure she's doing well there. How's the weather there, Sanda? It's usually beautiful. No, no, now it's raining probably. I can't hear you. We got to go to Jim, Jim or James. Now he's back with the boxes again. Thanks here for your service, Jim. Yes. No problem. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yes. Do you like the autographs I put on the books? Yeah. Oh yeah, much ado, I do about nothing. Yes. There you go. Yes. But but I'm I'm sorry, Paul. I seem like I'm always doing about something. Always worrying about something though. Well, that's gonna, you're gonna lose interest in that, brother. Yeah. You yeah. are. Don't, don't, uh, don't hope so much and you'll see it. You'll see the results, yes? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah? There's nothing huge in the universe that's stopping it, no. Yeah. John R., there he is. He's in the proximity of Byron Bay. Yes, we got uh, Michael, another Michael. We got some phone numbers. I don't know what that is. We got Deborah M. Nice to see you, Deborah, or be seen. Another anonymous folk. Uh, I think that's it. Hey, listen, everyone. Thank you so much for tonight. Uh, I'll see some of you tomorrow for recovery. And uh, again, hopefully see you on Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You. See you. Nice. See you guys. Hi. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mike. Oh, hey, oh James, James. Hey, James. Can you hear me? Tonight. Oh. What? Mike, was the volume good tonight? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I never even thought about it. It was good. Oh, there you go. Great. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye. Thank you, Paul. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Answer. Thank you. Thanks. Your answer.